Hey everyone, I know you're all getting prepared for Greg Hawks and here he is. Uh, Greg's going to be talking about sourcing tools and strategies, which I'm sure is going to be uh, very, very highly anticipated because people are always looking for more, um, for more sourcing techniques. Uh, and I have a few. I have a few. <laughs> yeah, good, good. I spend a lot of time looking for more sourcing techniques because that means I can spend less time having to actually do sourcing. So yeah. the more time I just spend investigating more techniques, right? I mean, it's kind of a, <laughs> you can get like, kind of get lost in that one, right? Yeah, and just for a tip, if anybody is having trouble seeing the presentation, you can double click on the on the screen and it'll make the the, the, the presentation a little bit bigger for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, so right, uh, sometimes my text gets a little bit small. Yeah, yeah, I'll post that in the chat as well. Okay, so, um, so, what I'm going to be talking about today is is wrestling with tough sourcing. I'm a big pro wrestling fan, as you can see by Orange Cassidy. Uh, Orange Cassidy is actually one of my favorite wrestlers because he does only what is, is required for the best ROI. So he's I, I sometimes describe myself as the Orange Cassidy of sourcing. So um, so we're going to be talking about a, a couple of different things. We'll get to the different tools and stuff later on, but I wanted to touch especially around some of the tough some of the tough wrecks that we all we all face oh I, I clicked too fast i clicked too fast hold on let me go back you gotta love life live stuff so what I'm going to start with is is when I first made a YouTube video. When I first made a YouTube video, when I first started the sourcing in real life uh, YouTube channel that I have, I didn't know a lot of stuff. I had to do a lot of research. I had to figure out what everything was. When I when I started making my my first video, uh, I found out there's a lot of things that I didn't know. I didn't know what an encoder was. I didn't know what video editors to use. I didn't know any of the streaming technology. I didn't even know what platforms to post this stuff to. So what I'm showing you right now is all the different things that that I had to to learn um, to start this process. OK, because there's there's a lot out there that you just don't know about. And so it was a challenge. I had to research a lot of sites, a lot of tools. I experimented a lot and broke things all the time. There's a lot of trial and error uh, that I had to go through. Um, and but with with all the trial and error, I found alternatives. I found several different tools, several different websites to, to use. Uh, I built a go-to a go list of resources specifically around video, uh, building this out, building the channel out. And, and I combined a bunch of tools, a bunch of technologies to, to, really, to really capture my vision, which my whole deal was being on camera while I'm showing somebody how I work through a process. So that was a huge vision, thing, a, a huge challenge because a lot of technologies didn't do that at the time like two or three years ago when I started this. So in other words, it wasn't very easy. And I know we've all hit a wall before. I know we've all hit that we've got that wreck that you're just like, where the heck am I supposed to even start? And around seven, eight years ago when I was working on the agency side, and sourcing is the same way. Really, sourcing is the same way. But um, that's that's the whole point of all this. Um, really, my wreck that that I kind of hit a wall quite literally it was when I was sourcing for a monorail engineer. I'm like, how do I even start this? You mean like, like a, a monorail engineer, like Disney monorails. And this was seven years ago. So this wasn't, you know, the, the Las Vegas monorail that they recently built, that was actually the project that I was working on. So this was seven, eight years ago when I was working on the agency side. And you know, that's, that's the first thing I thought about is like Disney monorails. So, you know, I, I basically built a battle plan kind of like I did with video production is, is, uh, you know, you research, you harvest a bunch of sites, a bunch of inventories, um, you, you, then you build your pipelines, then you start the outreach. Uh, research was really a big aspect of that. And you'll see that it, in, a, in a minute, why? So I researched, I Googled a lot of stuff, to be honest. And this is actually a search that I did uh, a, a couple weeks ago for a demonstration for this, for this presentation. Um, so it's still very viable. You'll see uh, the first thing I looked for was monorail companies. Okay. The reason I did that is because Google kind of has a cheat sheet now. It lists all the different monorail manufacturers. These are these are places that I would go 
to look for people that have worked on, on similar type of stuff. Um, this is building the foundation of keywords of knowledge that I'm going to use when I do start pipelining, when I do start aggregating different pipelines. So you'll see here, you see diff several different lists of monorail manufacturers. Okay, that's a great place to start. You see a list of monorail systems. This is a Wik Wikipedia. So obviously those are those are going to be places that you want to target people that companies that have actually built monorails or mon monorails that exist because the people that you're looking for are going to have worked there, are going to have worked on those things. Um, over here to the right, you see the International Monorail Association. Uh, we'll talk about associations in a minute, but that's a huge resource just in itself because look, we, we've got a membership here, uh, people that are part of this, this is an international thing. So if you're looking across the world on a global scale, this would be a key association to not only see if you could get into their membership site, but you could also look for similar LinkedIn groups. You could look if they have a conference or anything like that, that these folks go to. Automatic pipeline of, of very niche talent. And I wish I used some of these techniques back in the past because a lot of it, again, was trial and error, figuring out where we're, where we're supposed to be going, right? And so you do the research, whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's an hour, whether it's two hours, uh, I do a research before I even have an intake with a hiring manager. I do research beforehand. I do research afterwards uh, just to get a better handle on, on what I'm looking for. So through a lot of this re a, a lot of this Googling and a lot of the research that I did, uh, I was able to identify some keywords. So light rails, monorails, high speed trains, those are all relatable skills. Those are all relatable things that these folks worked on. Okay, so that was that was a that kind of expanded my inventory. I'm not just looking for Disney monorail engineers anymore. I have a couple of other things that are related that you could tap into. And and with this search, you'll see I'm 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 not using any fancy tools here. I'm not even using the site search. Okay, and it's able to pull up some Google Scholar documents, right? So Google Scholar patent sites for this type of stuff for this niche stuff can be can be uh, uh can give you a huge roi because look here there's a whole list of people and each one of these folks you can click into and pull a profile okay when we get into google scholar in a minute here you'll see they have lists and lists of different publications that they work with uh this can be a huge resource because every one of these people worked on this high speed train publication so i already know that they're innovators that they're they're very knowledgeable of what they do Okay. The other thing is I was kind of, kind of got ahead of myself and I put this at gmail.com in my search screen and I was able to pull up some direct emails. So, you know, there was a tool in, uh, there's a, a question in gym session just now about using, about where are some tools that can find emails? Sometimes if you just put in that little, that little blip here, you can find people, it pulls it up. That's how I find emails a lot of times. So, so yeah, lots of things here. I haven't I haven't dove in any tools outside of Google. I'm not using any site kind of site search Google operators. I'm just looking stuff up, right? And then once you build your keywords, once you build some sort of foundation knowledge foundation on on what you're looking for, then you start pipelining. Then you go to your go-to sites. You go to LinkedIn. You see what you can find. I, I literally think I put the same keywords in this string on Indeed that I used for uh, the, the Google Scholar example that I showed you just a minute ago. So you 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 see you're pulling civil engineers, you're pulling structural engineers. Um, this guy might not be an exact fit, but he's got monorail on here. So it's a it's a small pipeline. I could probably expand that a bit if I go like more than six months. Um, but this was just an example that 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 I wanted to show you guys. You build that foundation. You build a set of keywords. You you look for light rails. You look for high speed trains. You look for monorails. Uh, you look for like magnetic type of stuff, and and it'll broaden your horizons a little bit. So you're not digging so deep and and spending so much ROI on tracking people down uh, and, and and finding them that way. You've got people that are going to be more active in the market. People on Indeed that are that are looking for jobs on Indeed, they're going to be more active than somebody you have to dig into a forum. And you have to you have to you know look through some of the comments and things like that. We'll do that here too, but I, I just wanted to show you some examples before you get there.
and Facebook. Facebook is huge right now because you can find so much on Facebook that you may not even realize. Um, in fact, that's where I get most of my sourcing tips is is through Facebook groups. So, and, and monorail monorails are just the same. Um, I, I literally just found this monorail society just by just by looking for groups based on monorails in, in Facebook. And look, it's got over a thousand members. It's a public group, so I don't even have to join it. I can literally look at the members and look them up and see uh, see see their backgrounds and things like that. Now, this this is going to involve more ROI. You're going to have to dig a little bit more to get some information. And really, here I wouldn't scrape all the members because I can do that. But I would more look at some of the comments, like look at some of the discussions, see if there's anybody that's like really nerdy about about monorails and 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 you know have that kind of background, and then go that route either comment or you can reach out on Facebook for free. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, uh, find an email a lot of times, a lot of times, especially on the nursing side of things, I would, I would Facebook message people and they'd get back to me. So, so I just thought this was a, a, a cool example because I, I literally didn't have to, to dig very far to find this group. And again, research is the key. When you research, when you build your keyword list, when you build your inventory of sites, you're gonna start to know where to go to find these types of folks. Uh, I've been building inventories and, 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 and sites on top of sites for years. So if I know, if, if I'm looking for an electrical engineer, I know I need to go to IEEE. If I'm looking for a mechanical engineer, uh, you can go to ASME and there's, there's boards of engineering you can tap into. There's all kinds of resources that you can tap into. Uh, this search, I mean, again, I'm not using a site search. I'm literally looking through some of these inventories uh, based around a monorail, and I'm able to find several publications, several several entries, um, it, and, and blogs. I mean, if you find a blogger, I mean, a lot of people will look up people on, on sourcing blogs or recruiting blogs. Uh, and a lot of times if you're blogging, if you're vlogging, if you're doing that sort of thing, your contact information, your direct website is going to be out there somewhere. Okay, so again, you'll have to do some digging, but if you can find somebody who's an expert in that field, they might also be able to 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 lead you to to uh, as far as networking goes, somewhere that's that that's all somebody who's also a nerd about monorails or whatever the heck it is you're looking for. So uh, and again, it's going to lead to new pipelines. It'll need to lead to untapped talent, people that haven't been tapped by other organizations because I, I know like in, for example like there's not a lot of monorail engineer companies out there but you know you could you can find some some uh, uh diamonds in the rough or, or people that may not even know that you're hiring for anything like this and this is an example of one of the profiles that i pulled from that last search okay so richard you see you see a lot of information from from this author okay uh, author sites is another thing that you can target as well. Um, I have his full name. I have his profile, his biography. Uh, look at these publication topics, though. Linear synchronous motors. I can't even say it. Magnetic levitation. Magnetic levitation. Just put that in a keyword search and see what you find. Okay? Like, for real. That's that's a lot of times. I'll just put in something like that in Monorail, and you can you can find a lot of people that way. So aerodynamics, obviously. So these these are all leads, and you can actually click on this and view more. Uh, I think I can't remember if you can directly email the person, but look, that's that's an email logo. You probably could. Uh, I bet he has a a website or a, a book or something that he's written around this topic. Um, and a lot of times, especially with publication sites, what I've found is if you look them up on LinkedIn, ninety percent of the time they're there. You know, like that's that's one point of contact right there. Um, and and I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but you can actually use LinkedIn inmails now. In, in addition, you can you can click on the drop down. You can inmail them, and you can also email them at the same time. So if if you haven't looked at that, uh, the next time you send an email, check that out because two points of contact in my book is way better than one, right? So let's take it a step further because you can literally find anything out there if you just put in a couple keywords and this is a prime example again i'm a pro wrestling nerd um but people have written about stuff like this people are nerds about all kinds of things um sometimes if you just put in like best pro wrestler you get a list of people 
uh, if you if you put in you know the best independent pro wrestler, you get a list of all these folks that a lot of them work for AEW right now. So uh, or best pay per view events. I mean, I just thought this was hilarious because you can use this in your day to day for companies, for locations, for specific niche skills, for certifications. You can use this for anything for just about anything. So think about things like that because. Sometimes if you put in best or you put in something like that, like like best sourcing tools, just somebody type in best sourcing tools um, and and you'll find a whole list of them. That's how I found a lot of the, the video stuff, uh, especially when you're talking like the high, highly advanced stuff, like, like, like best streaming technologies. If you put in best streaming technologies, you'll probably find Restream or Streamlabs or a, a bunch of other things that you can use on LinkedIn Live. It's the same sort of thing when you're looking for when you're looking for a sourcing tool, when you're looking for a sourcing Chrome extension, when you're looking for a sourcing Chrome extension that works on Firefox because you're behind a firewall on Chrome. It's just stuff like that. It can also help you find tools and things like that. Okay. And so because I like to give uh, some of some of the places that I've gone to find that I've been successful, uh, I have a, a short list here. So if you, you might want to take a screenshot of this, but this is this is all on the, the HR sourcing toolbox too. So you can find that, that here. Um, you know, if you're looking for software, I mean, I've been able to build a lot of different uh, inventories for different industries. Uh, the the There's like over 70, there's probably hundreds of, 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 of software repositories. But the ones I have the most success with is, is usually GitHub, uh, Stack Overflow, Bitbucket, or some secondary ones. AngelList is great for startup. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, Slack. Slack is, is more a forum based. And there's boards of engineering. There's registries for, for, for especially for healthcare. Uh, Google Scholar, Google Pads are definitely something I use for scientists. A lot of different healthcare directories, um, Facebook groups, Core, Discord forums, all, all kinds of stuff on here, okay? Uh, conferences, membership sites, we'll get to that in a minute too. And, and you know, as far as finding people, I mean, it's you can you can find a lot of, of sites out there, um, but if you're looking for specific tools around contact information, US Phonebook is a people finder that I actually like. Hire Tool, Profit, Zabinfo can find emails. Zabinfo is acquired by Indeed, so that's not gonna be around for about much longer but it's been helpful in the past. You can randomly Google people through gmail.com. Um, some other people finders I've used are people in Raiderist. In, in the US, you can use Y Pages. Uh, you can also go to uh, in, Intel Techniques if you wanna look for a more OSI and T type stuff. And just, just a couple things to note. You wanna keep it slow style. Sometimes there's a simpler solution than, than writing out a humongous advanced uh, a Boolean string. Um, take, I always take time to experiment and grow my knowledge every week uh, because there's always an alternative. Uh, there's, there's, there's always something new to learn. Uh, and it, if I ever get stuck, it's, it's amazing what can happen if you just reach out to somebody and ask. I mean, if anybody's ever looking for a monorail engineer, definitely reach out to me, I'll help. I've, I've been through that struggle before. Okay, so uh, I promised you guys some tools and some, some sites. So let's get nerdy with it. I always show this because this identifies what I look for when I see a profile site. Look at the URL. That can be a, a, a site search Google string. Uh, I have his name here. I have his bio. I have that he works with React Bootstrap. I've got some keywords on here. Oh, by the way, I'm not logged in. Um, I have a direct website, which I love because it always leads me to contact information. Okay. The other thing I have is GitHub profile and, and also his screen name. So that could be more for investigation purposes. But whenever you look at a profile, look at all these things. Sometimes the, the answer is there. And I talk about conferences, associations, and summits. This is a conference that I pulled for Women in Tech, a Women in Tech initiative that we have. Does anybody notice anything about Haley's bio? Does anybody notice that we've got a Twitter and a LinkedIn profile and I didn't have to go anywhere? So that's what I'm saying is that this is a speaker list. This is out in the open and I didn't have to really dive in anything. I literally just found this by Googling and, and I have a whole list of people here and I could, could actually scrape this if I wanted to. But 
um, but it, but it's all here. So sometimes you don't you don't have to to dive as deep as you might think. I've got a LinkedIn profile here. I'm gonna look her up on LinkedIn and, and reach out to her directly. Okay. For the others, folks, you could you could probably look them up on LinkedIn. That's that's one point of contact, especially for this level because this is more executive level. Uh, you can also scrape websites, and I, I show everybody this because of all the information that I was able to pull from one website. Okay. Uh, I was I, I scraped this uh, a couple months ago. Uh, I've got all their names or location. I, I actually did this with data miner, I think. Uh, their websites. So again, websites are points of contact. You'll be able to to most likely if you have a website, you have your email or your your phone number on there or some way to to directly contact you. I've got additional links, and everybody has a Twitter profile. So worst case scenario, you can reach out to them by by on Twitter. And I actually was able to pull several interviews uh, through this website for some of our designers. So, and this is, again, was another website that I found by randomly Googling stuff. If you guys are interested in scrapers, there's Macho Man. He's, he's saying, this is how it's done, punk. Yeah, dig it. Um, the five that I typically use are Instant Data Scraper, which I know Brett Feig and, and I've done uh, several videos on. Data Miner, I've done a ton of videos on Data Miner. Uh, Data Miner Pro. Uh, which is it's in beta right now, but it's is super. It, it, I'm super excited about it. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute because I am coming close to time. Um, Web Scraper IO, which is I've I've talked about this a lot, but it's it's very much of a developer tool. But if you if you dig into it and you can use it uh, well, then it can be super powerful. And a lot of people forget that you can just copy and paste anything from a website. Okay, so if you have a list and you don't know how to extract it, just copy and paste it, put it in a spreadsheet. Or, or just put it in a word doc. I mean, it's it's it still counts, right? <laughs> and yeah, Data Miner Pro is one of my favorites right now. Uh, I basically built a a pseudo uh, social profile aggregator by combining some of the recipes that I've built in the past. So basically, it would crawl through this website. It would pull all the different profile sites, all the information. And I think I had like twenty eight columns uh, of of information. Uh, just just by combining tools and 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 experimenting uh, <laughs> through one of my live streams, like the last ten minutes of this live stream, it, it's really cool to see it all come together. But the first twenty minutes, I'm just like fiddling around half the time. And if you're interested in, it, interested in scrapers and automation, here's a list of of other ones uh, as well. So uh, again, instant data scraper, scrape similar, which is it, which is more. Uh, uh, basic, but it's it's a good alternative. I don't know if Grisper is still is still up, but it was a lot like Kimono. You can automate workflows with, through Zapier, Phantom Buster. Um, this is actually one of my favorites because it helps you. Multi, you can pull, you can open multiple URLs at one time instead of clicking them one at a time. So it's a huge time saver in that respect. So open multiple URLs. Um, it works. This one works in Firefox and Chrome. So that's how I know. <laughs> that because I was I was searching for non Chrome extensions for obvious reasons, um, and you can still enrich through the higher tool, and I, and I put Data Miner Pro on here because I enriched my own stuff. Bubble IS is a it's more of a developer tool, but basically you can build an app through through Bubble IS, and they have some automation with some of the plugins and stuff. Okay, so I'm at time, so I'm going to go through a couple of these quickly. If you guys want to ask questions while I'm doing that, I will do my best to answer them. So, um, so AngelList, AngelList is more for startups. Google Scholar, I've already talked to to you guys about. But look at look at all the information here. Look at all that information. And GitHub, I use GitHub a lot for cross referencing, simply because if you sign into GitHub and you look somebody up on GitHub, you can get their email, which I've got in this is, and and their their uh, their direct website. So. It's just a quick way to look people up. And OctaHunt is, is more about uh, contributors. You can you can use OctaHunt to pull a list of, of high contributors. Uh, this you can use this on a global level because you can see I'm looking at Dublin here. Uh, but it's it's a, a good alternative to seek out if you can't if you don't have the budget for seek out. And meetup groups, most people know about meetup groups, but you can literally find any kind of like audiences through meetup groups and and forums. Uh, Aaron Matthew has a good uh, Reddit toolbox with a list of tools there as well. And I have a Reddit CSE in case you just want to look for profiles. 
And yeah, I do. Hey, thanks, Lenore. I do have I do have a, a, a YouTube channel called Sourcing in Real Life. I have probably over 60 videos on it now, which is all kinds of sourcing things. And one of the things that I'm really happy about is that I, I was able I was finally able to find something to help me with my my thumbnails. That was a big win for me. So you see there are a lot. I have a lot of colorful type of thumbnails. So um, I, I actually, Jimmy, I do have an alternative for a Facebook search. It is a, uh, it's a, a Belay, Belay's uh, made a Facebook CSC. I'll send it to you. Let me see if I can actually pull that without breaking the internet, without breaking this presentation. I'll put this in there. I'll put this in the chat, but I, I use that. And a lot of times, like Facebook, you just look on Facebook. That's the CSC that will help you with uh, with with uh, searching Facebook. Hey, Greg, I, I saw a Discord pop up on there. I, I may have missed it, but what do you use Discord for? So Discord, I used – they have several different things on Discord. Uh, I, I was – Part of one community when I was looking for front end engineers called uh, called Reactive Flux, uh, so it's kind of like Slack. Yeah. But I like, I like Discord because they have uh, they have like yeah, new who is hiring type of 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 of, of sub. It's kind of like a subreddit, but it's uh, they have they have places you can go to to post jobs, but you can use like graphics, you can use gifs, you can use. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm definitely familiar with Discord. So, I use it. For yeah, for you know, for gaming, right? right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, for, what's Discord made with? Discord is built with React, right? right? So there's a there's a whole community of React engineers on Discord. It's it's called Reactive Flux. Okay. So yeah, I use Discord for for gaming, and then I also use it. There's a couple of like stock channels that I'm a, a member of there, and and um, yeah, I mean it's it's just another another great tool. I just didn't know how you were using it for. Yeah, and, and I mean, especially streaming. I mean, that's where we're all going because, like, if you look at some of the gaming communities, like Twitch, and like Facebook has a gaming streaming, you know, technology now. Um, LinkedIn Live is is streaming, and and so you you're seeing all these other companies kind of jump on the bandwagon. Twitch really does it the best, but every once in a while, j just take a look. I'm like, it's it's really funny because. There's a lot of, of people on on Twitch and on that that live stream like in mechanic shops. So yeah. you see, you, you, you yeah. never think that the look there. They do some crazy stuff on there. Like, so, you, you, I mean, you can stumble across the most interesting things on Twitch. I I, I ran across a guy one time who was um, building like a life size robot, and he was doing all of the coding as you were sitting there, and all of the building of the robot. Like the he was building it literally from scratch. It was the yep. insane thing. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. I've I've got some other resources in case anybody's interested in this stuff. So um, I've got the HR sourcing toolbox, the healthcare care, healthcare sourcing toolbox, my YouTube channel, um, and and a Facebook group group if you're interested in streaming and and some of the nerdy video stuff that I do. So awesome. What's the best way? Like, what's what's the um, uh, avenue that you check the most? Like email, Twitter. Uh, I'm on. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I mean, you can look at one of my videos, comment on YouTube. I always check those. So, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit of everywhere, but I'm, I'm mainly on Facebook and LinkedIn to be, be honest. Yeah. You should be able to find me. So, I'm the Greg Hawks. That's not the keyboardist for the cars. Okay, <laughs> that's that's not me. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I wonder if you could use that some way to to promote yourself. <laughs> no, I, I have. I'm I'm a keyboardist, but it's a computer keyboard. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, awesome, man. Um, just so just just so everyone knows, you know, I, 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 I apologize if you've heard me say this a dozen times, but everyone, every one of our speakers here today is 100 um, percent doing this out of the goodness of their heart. No one is compensated. So thank you very much, Greg, um, for taking the time out of your, your day today to, to help with this and, and to present on something that people are abundantly thirsty for, which is, you know, sourcing tools. Right. So yeah. um, thank you so much. And, and uh, everyone, the next session is going to be um, uh, at 12, 15 central. So at about 14 minutes from now, it's going to be Brian Chaney. But what you'll do is you'll have to leave this session. Uh, if you want to stick around and ask Greg any questions, you can. But when you're done, you need to leave this session by clicking the sessions button on the left hand side and then finding um, Brian Chaney um, for the next session in this room.
Thanks again, Greg. I'm going to take off and, and um, let you stick around if there's a, any more questions. All right. Yeah, I'll stick around for a couple minutes. Okay, perfect. So if anybody has any questions, just, just throw them in the chat and, and I'll do my best to answer them. So uh, Danielle, uh, to do that, it's a new functionality with a new version of LinkedIn. So when you go to your InMail, uh, you'll you'll see the option and you can you'll drop down. Uh, there'll be there'll be an option to send an InMail. There'll be an, an option to send an email, and then there'll be an option to send an uh, InMail and an email. You want to do both because I've seen my my response rates jump up significantly because of it. I'm at, I'm at like a, a sixty to seventy percent response rate right now. So, but it's it's in a drop down menu when you when you're sending the InMail. So when you go uh, to to message because they've they've always are changing their interface. Uh, look for the drop down menu. How do I manage the time for my sourcing activities? <laughs> I automate as much as possible. So um, scraping is a big part of that because I, I really hate manual entry. So I found a, a solution around that to where I could pull a list of people from, from a website um, and then go through go through those people. It, because all I really need is, is name, job, title, link, possibly email if I have the email. But mainly it's, it's, it's name, job, title, uh, and, and a link of some sort, and I go through I go through people that way uh, to make sure that they're viable. Uh, but it's it's more about our ROI. It's it's how much time are you going to spend digging into people's profile, into people's contact information, or or, or how how much time are you going to spend? Um, you know, just pulling the list and moving on to the next thing. So, Brett. So if anybody, hey Brett, can you drop can you drop your um, your uh, your YouTube channel in the chat so everybody can can take a look? So Brett actually taught me about um, about Web Scraper, and I would not have been able to figure that thing out without his tutorial. So if you if you are really interested, and if you're pretty good at scraping in general, check out some of his videos because he goes step by step. On how to set it up and data miner pro really mirrors a lot of what him and i can do with web scraper so um and for turbo 360 you may need a login um unless you do a site search i think i might have done a site search and, and pulled that and every every once in a while like the profile sites they might change their they might change their protocols so that could have very well happened What is everybody's LinkedIn email finder? Um, you know what? I mean, it depends on if you truly need a, a an email in my book. A lot of times I'll use LinkedIn. I've heard Lux, uh, Luxo. I've heard um, Hire Tool is another one. Um, US Phone Book is what, one of the ones I, I threw out there. Um, there's a lot out there. Swordfish is another one, Brett. So yeah, check out Brett's YouTube page, everybody. Yeah, Zap Info is is acquired by Indeed, so that's going to go away. But there's there's a lot out there. I have quite a few. Contact Out's another one. You can use you can use Contact Out. I think is Contact Out still? I don't know if they're free, but you can you can side search Contact Out and and pull people's personal websites too. Seek Out is paid though. U.S. phone book is is free. It's not a Chrome extension. It's a it's a website. Well, guys, if you guys don't have any more questions, I'm going to head out. Uh, I appreciate everybody jumping on and attending. Uh, if you do have any more questions, just you can you can just find me. Uh, out on social and, and send me a message. I'll be happy to connect with anybody who's interested in this stuff. I always like talking sourcing tools and stuff like that. So thank you guys for all for your questions and for attending.